Zachary Finley here, Assistant Service Manager for Sugami America. Today we're going to go over the new Kiens Flow Switch, some troubleshooting helps, and some tips and tricks to help you along. Okay, so we're going to go over some common troubleshooting ways that we can check our coolant flow switch. One of the misconceptions is that you can test this with the hand switch or an MDI mode, that it will actually not trigger the alarm circuit if the switch is off and you're showing flow or, or in reverse with the hand switch or an MDI or if you have it in single block. So the best way to do this is to make a small program and just basically turn, it, turn on your coolant, do a GO4 dwell. These are P's because this machine is set up in metric mode. Your machine, check your manual for your dwell code to make sure it's proper. But we just turn them on and off and on and off and loop it through. So we'll go ahead and start the program. I'll do continuous, then we'll go to system, we'll soft tab to PMC maintenance, and then it's status if it doesn't come up. And we could search for it, but we were looking at this code earlier. To search, you would do x29 bit 2 and then search, but it's right here. So you c if you can hear it, your coolant is on right now, it's flowing, and your X29 hexadecimal bit two, as you can see, is toggling with the coolant turning on and off. So that's showing that you're getting uh, the proper input as it's running in the program. Sometimes you'll get an alarm and it will say coolant alarm, either a 10 EX1010 alarm or an EX1061 alarm. That alarm circuit on some machines, not all, is tied in with the coolant level switch so your coolant level switch um, is a separate input, which is right here. So as you can see, the coolant level is, is fine. You can also check this in the ladder. So we'll do PMC ladder and you click the ladder button. Uh, password is one. So you're gonna do one input. And then we're gonna search this, that's on you can either page up and page down on these two. It's pretty close to this bit, but we'll search X29 bit two. What you do is you do menu search X29 bit two, and then word search, and it will bring you to that part of the ladder. And same thing, you've got you've got your input showing. There. So as it's running, you'll see it it flipping through. These are your timers. Timer 16, which is your, your flow switch off. If you toggle out, see you'll see your, your inputs. OPs are your keep relays. If you, if you scroll down, you'll see your flow switch on, which is timer 13 and you'll see that flipping. And here's your level. You'll have your level lower. As you can see, your coolant level is perfectly fine. You have separate timers for your coolant level switch. So as you can see, these are tied onto the same alarm. So always check to make sure your coolant tank is full before you go after a faulty coolant uh, flow switch. If you're running your machine and you were to get a coolant alarm, like an EX1010 or an EX1061, like this one, we can go through these following steps to show you how to help diagnose this alarm. This is the Kiens FDH32 sensor. So as it's running right now, you'll see your flow rate this is in gallons per minute. You can change that to liters per minute if you want to in the settings, which I'll show you later. As the coolant's running and cycling up and down, you'll see the flow rate goes down to zero. This is your low set point. So this means that your coolant, you're, you're asking the switch to alarm. If you telling it you're seeing flow, but it's underneath 15 gallons a minute. And you'll see the green light whenever coolant is flowing and it's above your low set rate. The four bars on the top left are stability bars. It's, uh, they kind of look like cell phone signal bars. You'll want to see three or four on that. That's actually the mounting bracket 
to the pipe. The flow sensor is a through flow. There's no um, obstructions inside the pipe. So this uses hysteresis and ultrasonic, uh, ultrasonic and like Doppler so that it'll check your flow. Aeration doesn't affect it, it reads through that. Uh, this is your main wire that goes into your wiring panel into the board X352. This is multi-pour. This is if you were to hook up a Brix concentration sensor that would allow you to measure the concentration. That little one and the square on, the, on there, on the top row, that is one channel output. That means you are just measuring one channel, which is the flow. The sensors will allow you to measure flow, temperature, temperature at this sensor or temperature at the brick sensor and concentricity. But as of a standard setup with just the flow sensor, we wanna make sure that that channel output is just on flow. If you get intermittent alarms later on in the day and you're not sure why, make sure that you only see one channel output on the top and it's only flow. Because if you have it set up to alarm during temperature, as the day goes on, you could get a temperature alarm. So now we'll go through the settings of the device. I'll go turn the coolant up. So as the sensor comes, it should be pre-set up with your new machine. Uh, we set these up in-house and the batteries last uh, quite a few years. But if it's not set up or you are having errors with it, we'll run through the initialization process just to help you out. So it, as it's here, you can hit this little square button. That'll kind of take you to the home screen. You can go to settings. You can go to IO settings. Make sure that your IOs are all correct. This is also your back button. So if you go down to initialize, you can say restart device, reinitialize device, restart all. We're going to initialize all. So basically, we're going to reset the entire device. So we'll go through from start to finish on how to properly configure the device. As you go through to reinitialize the, the device, or if you start it up for the first time and it has not been initialized, you'll get a main selection for language. So you'd pick your appropriate language. The center button is your select. The arrows move you around and navigate. This is your back or menu button. This is also your back button. So we're gonna, on this, it's, it's a vertical setup. So we're gonna cl click vertical for the, the orientation of the screen. The date setting you put in the, the proper date. For right now, we'll just cruise beyond this, but you can go up and adjust them. So right here, this is your FD H32. Multi-port is if you're gonna have a brick sensor hooked up to it. For right now, we don't have that, so we're gonna go to a single port. So we're gonna hit OK, so the flow direction. Now this is in alignment with the green light, so the flow is going this way, so that is correct how it is set up. This pipe is one inch, so we're gonna select that. We're gonna go up to one inch and select. We're gonna go down here, this pipe is metal. If you have it on a hose, that could be plastic. You can change it to plastic. We're gonna scroll down to set and continue. We're gonna do flow rate. We're gonna change that to gallons per minute. We're gonna change our temperature to Fahrenheit. And then you set and continue. This is critical. This, this switch is set up in your Sugami machine to be on PNP, positive, negative, positive output. So if you do NPN, you'll see some weird alarms in your ladder and it'll be really, you, you want to make sure that that is checked because it's very critical. You don't want to be on negative, positive, negative. So right here, we have channel outputs. So we only want to measure the flow. We're, we don't want to measure the temperature. You can if you want to, but you, you want to set that to a default of nothing. Channel three output is nothing. These are the outputs also. You can do temperature on the device, bricks if you have a brick sensor and then temperature on the brick sensor but we're just going to do flow so is your setting complete it is and then we have one more step before we can consider this initialized so it starts off at 7.9 gallons a minute as your low rate 
I like to push that up to 15. Um, anywhere from eight to 15 is okay. It really depends how many uh, lock lines you have closed or open. If you close all but two lock lines, you might have to change that a little lower. So this other setting here, you wanna go to this menu and you go down to settings and click okay. Go down one to section two of detection setting. Flow sensor is what you wanna change. This response time, it comes default at five seconds. It's a little misleading, but response time is not the time the sensor responds to send an output. Response time is actually your flash or burden rate that it checks uh, the current status of the flow. So we like to set that all the way down to low. So if you have coolant turning on and off pretty quickly, and that check that response time to make sure that that's set properly. And now your, your FDH32 is all initialized and ready for operation. Underneath your flow sensor, coming up from your flood pump, there's this brass fitting with a, a cap on the front. This has a high flow check valve in it that will open and close. It opens when flow is going up and it closes when the flow stops. Bleed your coolant down through your system and you will get a backflow error on your flow switch. Thank you for watching this video today. If you have any further questions, please contact the Sugami America service team. We're here to help.